In this lecture lab, I will show you how to compute Cohen's D effect size. Uh, for this, we will not use a, a built-in function or any kind of package. It's a, it's a fairly simple mathematical calculation, but, uh, but there's one particular trick in it, and uh, I wanted to show that to you. So uh, to uh, the general idea for Cohen's D, uh, we could just create a, a variable name, something like this, is to take a mean of one of the groups, so mean one, and I don't have this defined yet, uh, minus mean two, uh, and divided by something called the pooled, uh, pooled variance. And so this is this is uh, one calculation that we have to figure out. It's actually not very complicated because you've already done uh, variance calculation, but there's one additional step to create a pooled variance calculation. So let's take a look at how we're going to do this. So before we get to this calculation, uh, we're going to have to uh, load the data. So from homework six, I have loaded the data into a, uh, an object called DF. And I've created the filters. I've got I have got the routine and the follow up filters like so. And so uh, at this point, uh, I can create uh, uh, I've uh, I can create my mean, which was already required earlier on. So for the bar plot, I have already calculated the routine and follow up mean values. So I don't want to uh, recalculate this here. Just simply recycle that calculation. So in that case, we know that for the Cohen's d value. What we need is just a uh, routine dot mean in here and follow up dot mean here. And it actually doesn't matter uh, which what the order is. Uh, you will get a Cohen's D that's either positive or negative. The sign of the Cohen's D value does not matter. It's the magnitude that matters in this case. So this is very different from correlation where the sign of the value matters. Here it does not. Uh, okay. So let's look at the pooled variance calculation. Now the pooled variance uh, is going to be, uh, we're, we're kind of going backwards here. Uh, so a pooled variance calculation is done in such a way as we take the uh, sums of squares of one of the values and we take the sums of squares of the other filter variable and then we divide by the df of one of the groups and then the df of the other group. So this is what we need to achieve in order to uh, in order to calculate the pooled variance and then we can feed that into here so let's go backwards what do we need uh, we need the df1 uh, let's call this df uh, let's follow my naming scheme which apparently is using a period as uh, to divide the two words so i'm gonna call it routine.df and so for this we need n row uh, and so let's just remember what the uh, variable was routine and follow up so routine and then we need to do that for follow up dot df and row follow up like so so um, uh, we simply activate that code and we see that uh, each one has a different uh, sample size now if uh, sample size has been calculated at some point uh, earlier on and i can't remember it was calculated here for the sem it's actually better to just reuse uh, reuse your uh, variable here. So it's not it's not good form for me to recalculate it here, uh, because of course I need to um, take away one. That's all I need to do. So uh, since let, let, let's just make a quick uh, live correction here. I'll just reuse these routine and follow up n, and that way uh, I'm not I'm just going to. Um, uh, routine and and just recycle those those um, variable names that I've already defined. This is this is much better this way, uh, in terms of uh, legibility and the cleanliness of the code. So here it is. We have still the same values, and so uh, in for DF one we're gonna have these. Um, uh, uh, substituted like that so now our next our next uh, issue is finding the sums of squares now the I know that we have a really easy calculation for for uh, standard deviation for variance unfortunately we have to do it the manual way in order to in order to get to this uh, uh, in order to get to the sums of squares so uh, we have to remember what are the part calculations for this and 
uh, if you remember one of the first one was to come up with a deviation score so uh, we need a deviation score first for each one like so and so uh, if if you recall the deviation score is a deviation from the mean so we need to enter each raw score from our routine and our follow-up uh, uh, data frames so we can just pick the um, the data frame that we've created the filter uh, so now I'm referring back to these lines just the raw the raw data uh, but which has been filtered for routine and follow-up inspections and uh, and take away the mean of that value and I think the mean was defined uh, already somewhere um, yeah, we've even used it I believe yeah, routine.mean and followup.mean. So routine.mean, followup.mean, like so. Um, oh, oops, that's not correct there for sure. Oh, we need to refer to a column. That, that's a, uh, we need to refer to not non uh, non critical uh, values so here it is there so that's done so the next step is to uh, to square these because right now what we should so this if when you're verifying double checking your work you can output a little bit of this and see what kind of values are we getting so you can see that we're getting uh, negative and positive scores which is which is a good sign uh, and then for the next format, we're going to need uh, the squared routine, squared deviation scores. And so in this, uh, all we're doing is we're taking routine deviation scores and we're squaring them. And so in this variant, we'll, all we need to see is um, positive values. Like so. There it is. Uh, so double checking my work, uh, I can take a look and see, and that these are really all just all positive values, and it's a vector of values. So uh, it looks like I'm on the right track. And uh, then finally, in order to get our sums of squares, so our routine SS for sums of squares, we take our squared deviation scores and we uh, sum all those values up. And so there it is. Uh, so for follow-up, uh, we do the same thing. Squared deviation score. And here, uh, all I know is that when I output this value, this should be a positive single number when I output it. And indeed, it's a positive single value, 15,000, which uh, sums of squares tend to be some, some kind of arbitrary large number. So that seems correct. And so it looks like now we've got uh, um, all the pieces for us to calculate the pooled variance. So now we can just uh, take routine and follow up uh, uh, sums of squares in here. Routine SS and follow up SS. And so here to the, the order uh, does not matter. Uh, it's the ratio that's going to matter. So here it is, pooled variance, and we get a value of 1.32, and uh, that that it should be a positive small number, and that seems uh, that seems like that's what it is. And here, um, now we're ready to compute uh, Cohen's d. We've got our means and we've got our pooled variance, and so when we calculate it, we get a value. Uh, that that seems that seems reasonable. That seems like a, a medium uh, medium to uh, large effect size. And that's it.